Let's draw a triceratops with a leafy children's book style background using pastels and charcoal. So when I filmed the intro to this video, I figured this would be a kind of a tutorial video, like the T-Rex Jurassic World logo drawing was. But that was until I remembered how I filmed this drawing for my ASMR channel last year. I filmed it with the intention that you had to guess what I was drawing, so I'd give clues at different points throughout the video and zoom very close or film at strange angles, so it wouldn't be as obvious which dinosaur species this was. So this isn't a tutorial on how to draw a triceratops, but I can link some of the reference photos I used below if you want to draw along. I started out with a charcoal sketch. I'm using a charcoal stick from the Corelando charcoal set from Lidl and sketching out rough shapes to block where the dinosaur is. I'm drawing a freehand circle for the head and a half circle to the bottom right for the body and a curve for the nose kind of looks like an elephant trunk and a line for one of the legs. And then I'm sketching out the rough shapes for the tropical plants in the background. I'm drawing on a Crelando sketch pad from Lidl. It's 135 GSM acid-free paper, but I've also used normal printer paper or copy paper or just very thin paper for soft pastels and charcoal, and it works fine. One of these tropical plants kind of looks like a big asparagus, uh, a pine cone with those scales or scale leaves on the tip of the spear. And then behind the asparagus looking plant there are tall pointed leaves. And bottom left in the front, I'm drawing a leaf the shape of a half circle with sharp cutouts. It's behind the dinosaur's snout, but in front of the dinosaur's legs and body. There are loose pointed leaves hanging down on the top right. I'm using the Kohinoor soft pastels for coloring this. I got an idea for the background from a children's picture book. It was a library book and I only took photos from a couple of spreads in the book and not the cover, but I think I figured out which book this is with a bit of googling. So I'm assuming it's this David McKee book Elm shirts and find colors. I just love the tropical rainforest scenes in this book. David McKee was a British children's author and illustrator who passed away in April 2022, which was around a month before I filmed this footage last year. So I'm coloring those asparagus looking plants with blues and greens, turquoise, Coloring the middle of each scale with a lighter color 
and outlining it with a darker color, then adding a mid-tone in between and the darkest color between the scales for depth. Leaving the colors a little unblended, a bit rough, to make it look softer. I started coloring with these leaves because they were my favorite part of the whole drawing or painting. I still don't know if you call soft pastel works drawings or paintings. I get that the result might look more like a painting, but it's a dry medium, so somehow I still have a hard time calling it painting. For the rigid, upright, pointed leaves, I'm dividing the leaf down the middle and coloring one side darker, like it's in the shade, and the other side lighter. Still keeping up with my blue and green color scheme for the surroundings of the dinosaur. I'm adding white dots to the leaves. The children's book had something like that and I just loved that look. I would say I've had this soft pastel set for like 14 years. I got them when I was at university and during my work practice or summer job and I was feeling like I needed to get back into being creative after having a break from art. And I took a bus after work to go to the art supply store and bought the soft pastels and a watercolor set and different softnesses of graphite pencils and watercolor paper and some cardstock for pastels and acrylic ink with my salary. And I got some art books too, some from the library, some I bought and I started practicing in the evenings after work. Well, I guess I got the books first, started with the supplies I had, and then figured out what supplies I'd need and want to buy from there. And I also started posting my art online, so that was where all this began. Thank <laughs> you. 
For the round leaf with the cutouts, I'm coloring the whole thing with a bright green and then adding yellow to add coverage and a bit of variation in the color. starting to sketch the dinosaur in more detail and I filmed it from a funny angle so you can't really follow this but I'm starting with the snout or the beak and the mouth and the horn I guess it's actually called a beak rather than a snout Triceratops has a similar beak to parrots but they also look pretty much like rhinos. They were just a lot bigger than rhinos. And then I'm moving on to sketching the rest of the face, the eye socket, the head. They have a bony frill around the head with points on the edge. And the frill has two indents and there are two horns on the top of the head. So three horns in total and that's what the name means too. Triceratops means three horned face.
I'm using a leather chamois as an eraser to neaten the sketch before coloring and drawing those points I mentioned earlier that the collar or the frill has. Close up of the eye, adding some wrinkles around the eye, and this is where I start coloring the dinosaur too. I'm doing green eyes or a green eye with some brown or orange and now for the skin of the dinosaur or the scales they're covered in no one really knows what color they were exactly so you could do whatever you want for the colors I started with brown, yellow and blue around the eye.
then went back in with charcoal to add some of the detail and contrast that was lost with the pastels. For the rest of the body I'm doing red, brown and pink scales, similar to the first plants. Lighter color in the middle of the scale and darker on the outside and between the scales. And some white as highlights. I prefer soft pastels to any other pastels because you can make such saturated vibrant paintings or drawings with bright vivid colors but I also have a love and hate relationship with them because they're so messy. You'll have the pastel dust all over your hands, all over your desk. Just picking up the artwork afterwards will smudge your hands. And the finished pieces are of course hard to store because they'll get smudged or they'll smudge your other artwork and I just have them in a pile with baking paper in between each drawing so that at least they're only smudging the baking paper. And framing them is another issue because they'll be wiped off into the glass. So you need to have this mat around the drawing in between the artwork and the glass to keep the pastel from touching the glass. And that usually does not come with the frame, so you need to buy them separately or make them yourself. And I've usually done it by cutting thin pieces of cardstock and folding it to make it a little thicker and then taping four of those pieces together to form a rectangle to put inside the frame. So I feel like soft pastels require some extra hassle that I sometimes just don't want to deal with. So I don't reach for them that often, even though I like them.
I'm coloring the background darker with brown and blue. Coming back to when I started getting into art again at the university. I went from just posting the finished pieces online in DeviantArt to posting a few sketches or work in progress photos too. And it was like the golden age of blogging and I eventually wanted to start my own blog. I was sharing my art and my crafts and doing mail blogging because snail mail and post crossing was another hobby I started getting into after getting back to art. And after a few years I figured I could share the art process much easier in video rather than just taking a few photos from different parts of making it. And I decided I wanted a new digital camera and a tripod for my birthday to then start making videos the following summer after I graduated from my second degree. And that's how this channel was born.
I wanted to make this a children's book style, colorful, whimsical drawing, and I added pinks and light blue in the shading and highlights. I drew the Tyrannosaurus Rex Jurassic World logo before this one, and I do have a narrated real-time video about that one too. Or partly narrated because just like with this one, it turned out I did not have enough to say to fill the whole length of the video. But anyway, since the logo is a fossil, it's not very colorful, but I added a bit of color in that too, with the bright colored highlights. But with this one, I wanted to make it really colorful. It's not a fossil, it's a live dinosaur, although not to scale with the plants around it and not that realistic looking either, but lots of colors nonetheless. By the way, my nail polish does change throughout the video and it's because I reused some of the clips of the soft pastel set and so on from the T-Rex video and didn't realize I had different color nail polish on until seeing the clips while editing.
think we are drawing the Jurassic World logo next with the same supplies we just used. Watch this video next. See you there.